I can smell the air around the camp where Kinuayuak Ashiwak was born. The air is fresh upwind, cooling the tip of your nose and tasting of a wild dash from the water. Downwind, you can smell the dogs, the burning seal oil, and wort skins. It is not a bad smell. It is the smell of home. I can see Kinuayuak as a small child, her dimpled brown hands waving at the sky, and her fat feet digging into the curves of her mother's back. A tangle of hair at the back of her toddler's head turns sharply as she takes in the vision of an upik for the first time in her young life. That was all that time ago, when people still crossed the Atlantic by ship and hardly anyone owned cars. I can see the swirls of snow around the Ithluyak, where Kinnuayuak first started sewing, her young hands steadfastly holding on to her needle and thread, her eyes darting over to the work of her older womenfolk. Outside, the glow of light and warmth is beckoning within the sparkly darkness. It is an aquamarine hue of home. That was all that time ago, when there was barely a railroad, let alone highways. As colors and animals and sewing and words filled Kinnuayuak's vision, she was also witness to the clash of shamanism and Christianity in the Arctic. It took her father away. That was all that time ago, when the clash of dogmatism took many fathers away during the Second World War. It would be dangerous to say that Kinnuayuak's life was idyllic. Idyllic because she lived on the land until she was in her 30s already long married, and the mother of many children. She emerged and re-emerged from death and sickness many times, and that is no different from what we endure today. But it is safe to say that Kinnu Ayuak's life was resilient. She used art to heal, to express, and to love the world around her. In her own words, there is no word for art. We say it is to transfer something from the real to the unreal. I am an owl. And I am a happy owl. I like to make people happy and everything happy. I am the light of happiness. And I am a dancing owl. There is a myth that Inuit did not have a concept of art before the modern age. That there is no three-letter word for it. No full-time profession devoted to the creation of it. That the introduction of paper transformed everything. Allow me to defy the notion by saying this. There is no such thing as Canadian art before Kinnuayuak. Canada is hand-drawn by Kinnuayuak. The lines that swooped in and rushed out at the same time, the bulbs of power, the circles of light, the kimilnak red, sungak yellow, dungu purple, outline and color our modern identity. Her deft fingers created images that were catalysts. You see, before Pierre Trudeau and his dancing feet, there was no Canadian unity, just Canadian confusion. 
this country as we know it, was still basically a British colony with no nationalism of its own. It was a place that smacked of imperialism, residential schools, and assimilation. In those 1960s days, we got the Canada flag, 100 years of existence, French immersion schools, the Montreal Metro and its rounded bucket seats, the National Arts Centre and its octagons, and Expo 67, and the Enchanted Owl and Inuit Art. It was an explosion of Canadian celebration, a blooming of Canadian togetherness. A time when people were allowed to express their love for land and modern aesthetics. Kinuayuak and her owls and birds burst into the international scene when Canadians needed someone from the land with indigeneity to give a nonverbal Canadian identity. Not only did she give us this identity, she gave us a whole new world to gaze upon. Little did the art world care to realize that they were creating the myth that Inuit did not make art before it was marketed to the South. Here was a genius who never admitted to seeing her own artistry. Here was an artist who thrived on collaboration here was a woman devoted to her family, her loves. Here was an Inuk who traveled the world only speaking Inuktitut. From the outside looking in, many people saw a traditional person entering the modern world because they could not understand her modesty, her methods, nor her words. But from the inside out, we know that her modesty made her soul rich, that her community believed in her. We know that she helped create modernity. And it is our job now to make sure that our art, our words, are always challenging us to change the world. Aren't we so lucky that we can still look at all the light of happiness that she gave us and still be able to ask her dancing forms? Kanu wo kakinuayuak. Kanu wo 